have a 50% burn, so 90% of chance this patient will die. But uh, today, 50% of the burn, they will have over 90% of chance they will survive, and 90% of the burn will have over 50% of chance. <coughs> so, This is the typical severe burn. <coughs> Other, you know, so the survival rate, uh, survival rate you know, improved, but actually the problem remains. So with each severe burn, there will need surgical intervention. Uh, uh, surgical intervention. So what we can do usually is to harvest the skin from the calcium site, then divide the, in the dead tissue, then transplant the skin. Um, the problem is, when we harvest the skin, we have to create huge dermocyte wounds. So if a patient comes with 60% burn already, so that means we have to create another 20% of dermocyte wound. The patient ends up at 80%. So that's really, this could compromise patient health, and that could get infection, that could die. And uh, in a lot of cases, like this little kid, and uh, she has 85% full sickness burn. So there's no way we can harvest the skin from here to cover the whole body. So we have to find a way to heal the wound, to cover the wound to regenerate the skin. And here it comes to the cultured skin grafts. Really, in the last uh, 30 years, this has become more and more important uh, in burn wound care. And there are two types of uh, culture skin being used worldwide currently. And the first one, what we call it, is uh, culture epidermal autographs, uh, or CEA, so which is just the top layer of the skin. And the second one is the engineered living skin substitute. So it's, uh, it com uh, combines both top layer and uh, the, the bottom layer. Talking about um, stem cells for the for the therapy, and really, really, this is based on the stem cell theory. Actually, in the skin now, it's very clear we know there is a, a group of cells, a subpopulation of cells, hiding there. So there are epidermal stem cells. They actually follow the order, you know, the, the rules of stem cells that can regenerate themselves and uh, to repair the skin, regenerate the skin. So basically the CEA or the skin substitute technology is based on isolating this group of cells and we grow them under laboratory condition. So this is a CEA sheets we grow under laboratory. If we look uh, histologically, so we can see they actually combine uh, composed of about 10 to 15 layers of cells. And then both, uh, at basal region, you still see these very dark spots. So there are actually stem cell, congenic cells. You know, uh, that can be used for therapy. So, so the, the tissue therapy really basically means it's about how we isolate the cells, grow them under the forest condition, and deliver the cells to restore the function of that organ. Uh, this is a study done by a French group many years ago, and it demonstrates actually in the first biopsy, you can see the congenic cell number, the population is very small, actually, it's only about you know, up to about 4%. And, but if we grow them, expand the cells in the laboratory condition, we can push the congenic cell number very high. And uh, that can actually form epithelial uh, sheets and the CEA. If we use different substrates, then we have different <coughs> percentage of chromogenic cells. So, so we can actually use this to deliver very high population, high number of uh, stem cells into the wound. This is how we actually used this to treat one of the patients. This is the patient from uh, the, the little kid who just saw uh, before and uh, it's 85% full sickness burn, so it's really deep. You can see that the bone is cracked, you know, deep to the to the muscle. 
And so what we did is we actually isolate, took small biopsy, because she doesn't have enough skin, so we took small biopsy, which is about four by four, uh, two by two square centimeters, that's four square centimeters. And then we isolate cells, expand the cells under the borage condition. So we grow into skin sheets. And, uh, but at the same time, we actually debride the wound and uh, <coughs> then we cover the wound with the tissue engineered uh, demo template, what we call Integra. So it's based on collagen and uh, other components. It's a porous structure, so it helps to regenerate the demo. In fact, so once it's ready, about 28 days later, actually usually we do three weeks later, but because the patient wasn't stable, so we actually delayed one week. And then we harvest the skin on the backing material and then transplant it. So this is five days post MPIC uh, transplantation. So you can see the wound basically is closed. So from here to here, it's huge change. And at day 12, basically the wound is closed. So it does work. <coughs> Uh, in in, in Berlin, the bad version of our skin grafts, so we actually use technology for skin tissue engineering, so it combines many areas of <coughs> and uh, it's really need to create uh, 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 material, uh, scaffold, and uh, in combination with the stem cells and some other uh, molecules, so we can create a, a bad version of skin. And this is to show you how the scaffold we used, um, actually not just us, I mean widely used around the world at the moment. Uh, the first one is called Integra, so it's, um, it's a gag uh, format, so it's a porous structure. And the one, one side, is, it's a silicon layer, but inside, underneath actually is a porous protein structure. So the blood vessel can actually grow into, into to regenerate the wound bed, to rescuerize the wound bed. And uh, once we laid it on, three weeks later, we peel off the, the silicon layer, and the wound bed is ready for grafting the CEA. And the second one is for the metriderm. So this, the difference is, uh, it's, it's very similar, but the difference is this one actually has the <coughs> elastic uh, components in, so it's stronger and uh, <coughs> Does it have the silicon layer? So it can be done in you know, one step procedure. And we put it on and it just graft a very thin layer of skin on top, just in one procedure. And remember the CEA uh, section, so it's only 10 to 15 layers of cells. So using the scaffolds, we can <coughs> generate skin substitutes in different ways. So Depending on scaffold we use, we have different sort of uh, histology. And, but they all have two layers, <laughs> epidermis, uh, epidermal layers and dermal layers. And uh, this one actually used a um, uh, cellular human tissue uh, as, a sub, uh, as a substrate. So you can see it's more close to real human skin. So we can get it from here to here. So and uh, <coughs> when I was uh, in the States last year, so I had a privilege to see one of uh, prof Professor <coughs> Boy's patients, and uh, they actually create this skin substitutes on the laboratory and graft it to the patient. So it's a full sickness wound and uh, with the full sickness skin substitutes. And you can see this is uh, this area here, you, you can almost see a sheet, so it's a square one, and piece by piece, they laid it on, and this is 14 days later, the wound is healed beautifully, so. and it's 28 days later, so it's really, compared to the normal skin graft, there's a little difference, the only difference is the color, because uh, the current con uh, culture condition doesn't allow the banana size to be co at the same time. So it can heal the wound 
in a much better way if we create <coughs> the engineered spin substitutes. And uh, the good thing about this is it's much stronger, so it, it provides immediate even coverage and it delivers all different kinds of uh, factors. And the metrics proteins and pro promotes angiogenesis and it promotes uh, the granulation, so which is important for the healing. And uh, it's a permanent pressure of the tumor. It's really good for different. So because it already has the demo layer, so it doesn't need re regeneration in time before uh, the, the, the graft. But um, does that mean it's perfect? And uh, actually, the answer is very clear is now. Um, so there's a lot of challenge issues. That be before we we look at the issue, and uh, I think we should speak. <coughs> so this is uh, the epidermis under electron microscope. And uh, but if we remo remove it, we don't under this. So this is what we see: the demo layer. So you see the the pallium and, uh, and all these structures. So uh, what, what I call the nanostructure, which is really critical for the interaction between the dermis and the epidermis and uh, the blood supply. And if we remove this, you can see 3D structure here. The epidermis on top and the dermis in the rich blood supply and all the sweet plants. So all this actually is missing in what we can prepare at this moment. And if you look at the gene expression, Cultured CEA, although they're similar to the the skin, so the but so they're, they're not identical. So. And the CEA actually it only contains keratinocytes, so it's really fragile. So it's very very difficult to handle. It takes very long time to harvest, and it doesn't have the dermal structure and doesn't have the nanocytes, and it's very sensitive to infection. So the same bacterial load doesn't destroy the normal skin graft, but it will destroy the, the CDA. And it takes about three, two weeks to generate, so sometimes it could be too long. And uh, it really depends on the demo regeneration. <coughs> it doesn't have the blood vessel, although some laboratory now can actually regenerate blood vessels in the CEA, but functionally, we don't know whether it's working and uh, still it doesn't have the nanocytes, no follicle, no sweat glands, and take about much longer time, six weeks to generate, so it will contract. Um, so the problem is there, and uh, what, because this is a nanotechnology, so nanomedicine, so I think, you know, I, I, I want to, people pay attention to this and because um, I, I want to find a, a way if we can re resolve this issue so uh, I hope you know the technology will help you know, us in the future improve it so this is just some example I think uh, the technology already has some impacts on the wound healing side you know. uh, this is just some example I want to show so, but I, I hope you know there's more coming in the future um, so the skin regeneration is very quick, very very critical. Okay, so it depends on the biomaterial and um, also the stem cells. And uh, while the product I, I just showed you, the CEA, there's a huge problem with how we do this. So in the past years, and uh, some Japanese scholars that uh, already developed the technology which is a thermal responsive surface which can be used for growth cells and for harvesting. So instead of treating the cells with the enzyme, we can actually change the temperature and harvest <coughs> the cells. So this is what I, I would like to, you know, to, to find out from this conference. So in future, maybe some collaboration can be generated and uh, so we can develop technology similar like this and which will be really helpful to us. Um, and this is another scaffold. 
of artificial skin we generate using 